This adorable little drill press is the Bosch PBD40, a drill press I've had for about two years now and I've finally gotten around to making a table for it. And in case you're wondering, yes, this is a bit of a fellow project. The big project I'm working on is that close to being done. This is a very simple drill press table. An off-cut piece of plywood from a previous project is all that's needed and it gets ripped down to size. The off-cut from this will get used later on. With the base cut, it's time to figure out where it will be centered on the drill press and where the post fits into that so it can be cut around. A high tooth count blade in a jigsaw leaves a more than acceptable finish for shop furniture. On this particular drill press, the coal that mounts the pillar to the existing table sticks out a bit, which can be countered by chamfering the underside at the router table. To figure out where the table will be mounted, we need to first partially disassemble the drill press. With the base off, the two slots can be traced. The same method could be used for a standard circular drill press table. I have a whole stack of these M6 Type D threaded inserts, which means they have a small flange at one end. To get that to sit flush, they must first be counterbored very slightly. Following that, an 8mm hole can be drilled. Finally, the threaded insert can be driven in. To add in T-Track for both hold downs and the fence, a dado is needed. At the table saw or using a router table, several passes get a very snug fit. The T-Track should be flush with the table or even just slightly below. No drill press table is complete without a sacrificial insert plate and for this I've gone for an offset square insert. Square is easier to make quickly and the offset means more of the insert is used when rotated. I made a dummy insert that's larger on all sides by the offset required by the guide bushing on my router. That could be screwed into the center point of where the insert will go. And then using blue tape and super glue, I could temporarily glue down some scrap plywood that will act as the template. The depth of cut is set by using the insert material itself, in this case, six millimeter plywood. If you're unfamiliar with how a guide bushing in a router works, here is a very quick primer. Let's pretend that this plastic pin is a straight bit cutter. It doesn't matter what the diameter it is, just it's a straight bit, regular straight bit, no guide bearing on it at all. Normally you would not be able to follow any sort of template with that at all because it would cut into the template. That's where guide bushings come in. They will come in a variety of diameters and variety of materials. These ones are specific to Bosch's system, but there are also generic port cable brass style ones. The guide bushing gets loaded into the router base, like so, and now the template can ride up against the guide bushing rather than the bit itself. So when you plunge down, the bit never comes in contact with the template it only cuts the workpiece. Different diameter guide bushings mean that you have different diameter offsets from the bit to the template. So those are things you need to keep in mind when designing your templates. In the case of the drill press, I used a half inch cutter and a three quarter inch guide bushing, meaning I had a quarter inch difference. However, that's spread over the two sides. So that means that it is on any one side an eighth of an inch or 3.125 millimeters. In one corner, a force bit is used to create a thumb hole. The other three corners get squared up with a chisel. It's either square the corners or round the corners of each and every insert. You could call the drill press done at this point, but where's the fancy? Some hardwood edging can be trimmed to width, then glued on.
Because the back side of it doesn't need edging, I didn't trim things to length before gluing. They are easy enough to trim off with a handsaw. Finishing shop furniture does protect it, but it also makes it much easier to clean sawdust and other debris off. Remember that off cut at the beginning I said would become a fence? That receives a rebate in the form of two regular cuts for some T-Track. Assembly of the table is pretty straightforward. The T-Track gets screwed in with number four screws. T-Track bolts go through the holes in the fence, followed by a washer and the cam handles. The whole table gets slid into the slots on the drill press's base. Then the bolts are tightened, holding it down. I could have added on a big table or some drawers for storage, but at the end of the day, I wanted to retain one of the best features of this drill press. It's extreme portability and storability. Thanks for watching.